Welcome back everybody. Thank you very much for clicking on the video. This is a Care Collab update video combined and today I'm teaming up with Fernanda Nacimiento, Orchids and Succulents. She has all the orchids that I have here and much of it is because we've been plant swapping. That's why we decided to do the Care Collab series with these orchids but give an update as well on how they are doing in our different environments, this time of year being January 2021. I'm going to start quickly with just giving a general overview because there are five plants in this section of the temperatures that I'm keeping this lot at. These four in pots, not that one. <laughs> the minimum night temperature they are getting in my environment at the moment, which is in Southern Spain, is 15 degrees Celsius. I do not want them to go any lower because of the setup I have with the LECA and self-watering. Evaporative cooling is a big thing with this setup and I always guesstimate two to three degrees less in the pot as the ambient air would be. So my cutoff is 15 degrees and I can pretty much maintain 15, 16 degrees at night in the dining room area where these are currently staying in at night because of the very cold temperatures we have at the moment. That's the minimum. In the summer when they're living outside, it just gets as hot as possible, you can imagine. Now, the difference between the summer being hot and how much light I give to which orchid depends on its location. And here I have Schomburgia or Myrmacatavola thompsoniana. And here's the Myrmacatavola Moria Luis Fuchs purple. And these two are known to love sunlight, lots of sun. However, this in my collection is relatively new. I got her in September of 2020. And she is a juvenile, not quite a seedling, but a juvenile. So I'm not going to put her out into full sun in her first summer with me until I don't see a little bit more substantial growth coming. But she's doing really well since I managed to pot her up just in time in order to take advantage of a mild, mild Indian summer, which worked out perfectly. And you can see that the roots are growing really well. And there are some signs of new growth nubbins at the base. She is already pot bound. This is awesome because then maybe next year come spring, I'm just gonna take her out of the pot, bump her up into the next size and then be able to leave her alone for two years. Doing really well. So she, even though she likes to have a lot, a lot of sun and direct sun, she will be more protected behind a white curtain, but with super bright light in a very hot part of my grow space, which would be on the east side of my patio. Needless to say, the Thompsoniana is much more mature. She doesn't look it. I'm not too pleased about the fact that I didn't get the same size growed pseudobulbs as I did the year previously. These are by no means the same size, half. And that is a little bit concerning. I'm thinking that it's probably because of the repot. She was divided and maybe that sort of set her back a bit and just stunted her next two growths of 2020. But needless to say, she does live almost in full sun all day long in the summer. She is a mature plant. Her new growths are growing roots inside the pot. She's already pot bound again and I've already got the next new growth coming right here. Now for comparison purposes, this growth, I do remember that this big large growth here, it was a much more substantial size when it came out and started growing. So I'm still not convinced that this one is really, really happy at this point in time with its progress on the growth front. I'll have to wait and see. Same with the Myrmacatavola. I'm going to bump her up into a larger pot come spring straight away. And because I am growing inorganically, I don't have to worry about the timing. I don't have to do it now in winter. I can now just, because I'm bumping up, 
just take the orchid out of the pot, get a bigger pot and fill around the edges. So I'm going to get away with just bumping up, even though now I have active root growth and it probably will stop come spring. But that is the plan for these two. I have not gotten the Thompsoniana to bloom yet. I wonder what will happen, how long that will take. We'll have to wait and see. So basically the care that I'm giving is how I'm bringing them to get them to bloom and hopefully I can be successful. So the next one here is Cattleya holdenii, a very proliferous root grower, but a very, very slow grower as such. This is a cut. I had initially intended to do a rhizome cut with the whole plant in order to encourage a different direction of growth, not remembering at the time that I actually had cleaned up the entire back part of the orchid and there were no roots. So I ended up with a single piece that was absolutely not even fixed to the pot. This piece I took and I did the tea bag method in order to encourage root growth and promptly it did. It started with a new growth which produced great roots and that cut went to Fernanda in Portugal. Her video will show how her cut is progressing. Mine right here, basically, I would say because the back bulbs were cut off, even though it was growing something in the front, which is this growth here, has returned to a juvenile status. It is extremely slow growing. It's not really one that sort of takes off. So only now am I getting a new growth for this piece. However, the root side of it, you can see this whole edge of the pot is filled. The aerial root, which I damaged, which is typical when it comes to moving them inside, can't be helped, collateral damage. On the root front, she is super, super active. For me, that is one of the most important factors is to get roots growing. Everything else will then take care of itself. But she is in here one year and is doing quite well. So last year's growth developed a little bit smaller than what we had before the cut. And I'm seeing quite a substantial good fat size growth coming here. So I'm hopeful that this one will be a little bit more to write home about. And there's another little swelling down here. Now I should be so lucky to get two growths in one season. But again, we shall wait and see. The next one that we have on the common front is the Lelia pacavia, pot bound, root bound. And I can tell you that this one is a beast when it comes to root growth as well. Absolutely loving the setup. There's only Lekka. In all these pots, I only have Lekka. I don't have a mix of Ceramis or anything. And this one lives in a shady, dappled light area during the summer. Let me just qualify that thought with the Holdenii. The Holdenii also lives, these two pretty much live next to each other in a shady, dappled light area with occasional sunshine, but not direct sunlight like the Schomburgia in the back, the big one. But the Bacavia is doing great. I've had it almost three years now, and it was very small, a little juvenile in the back has two directions of growth. It is the first time though that I have a sheath which grew in the summer of 2020. There is a sheath, it's blind, there's nothing in there, it's still green. I'm just going to hedge my bets here and say that this is the next stage of this orchid maturity. And maybe the next growth will then be a blooming one. I really look forward to seeing this one bloom. But based on the fact that it has just been repotted this year into this pot, the pot is full. No complaints at all. And now we come to the little oddball out in this little series. Holcoglossum kimbellianum. In an orchid top, tied to a choya log, and it is just a beast of an orchid. I love its growth habit, but 
we are having issues with the bloom front. I have not had it bloom for me since I got it. And I have to say that it is an easy grower, but it only has so, in so much that it grows well for me, but it doesn't bloom. So what have we got here? Let me see that I get the light right. The focus may be better. There we go. When I received this orchid, it was one growth, which is very difficult to see, but it is a single growth going up the side of the Choya log to here. And then it grew from that single point another well, 30 centimeters up, and I cut it. And that's the piece that Fernanda's got. Before I cut it, something was growing right at the edge down here, and I thought, I'm getting a flower spike. Turns out it is not. It is a branch. It is going to continue growing upright from the main stem. And then on the side here, in the years that I've got it, it started to chuck out these two. Let me go down. These two plantlets right here. You can see the two leads going up. Incredible, vigorous grower. Can't complain about that whatsoever. Seems to be happy on the growth front with what I am providing. But yeah, no blooms. So this past year, 2020, we got ourselves another lead down here. And my goodness, I can't, I can't say anything with regards to how much I do love this orchid despite no blooms. If it's gonna keep doing this for me, then one day I might get it right and it's gonna bloom one heck of a show. So what am I doing differently with it this year? Well, artwork and orchids. I think it was two years ago suggested that it needs a much colder winter in order to provoke the blooms. Last winter, I chickened out. When it got lower than 13, 12 degrees Celsius, I'm like, no, this, is, this doesn't make sense for an orchid, especially not with these leaves that are extremely strap-like and very fleshy. They, they look sturdy, but they can break very easily. So I brought my orchid in just to, yeah, because I was not sure. This year, I'm like, okay, that was not enough. And she has had so far a couple of nights with single digit temperatures of eight and six Celsius. And I am freaking out, but I'm going to stay brave. I'm going to continue to make sure that this orchid gets a chill factor like it's never had before, because that is probably what is going to produce and provoke the blooms. Kimberlianum, I cannot complain. I won't even be angry about it. Is that the fact that it's not blooming? I love this orchid. It is so funky and so happy to be growing. Now let's see if the chill factor this winter is going to actually induce blooms. And that will be an update in the months to come to see what happens. Meanwhile, I want to say thank you so very, very much to Fernanda Nacimiento, Orchids and Succulents, for jumping on the Care Collab concept of 2021. I appreciate it. I know that not everybody has time with videos, but I really appreciate the fact that we are doing this, that this is going to be something that we can move forward with throughout the year and keep updating on the plants and letting everybody who looks for these orchids just go to the description and you will find links to the videos that pertain to this Care Collab series with Fernanda Nacimiento Orchids and Succulents. There will be others. We're working on other things and other channels and other orchids as well. So I hope that this little series and this little group of orchids right here was helpful to you, of interest to you, and then we'll look forward to the next ones as the year progresses, and let's grow together. Thank you very, very much, everybody, for watching, for your support. If you have any further questions about these orchids that I did not cover, 
then please let me know in the comments below and I'll be very, very happy to elaborate further. Have a wonderful day. Stay safe. Take care. Bye.